الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبة فلا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil and protects us from kulisu wa makru. May Allah ta'ala rectify our condition and affairs. Bless the Muslims everywhere, protect the Muslims everywhere, forgive the Muslims everywhere, and raise us up amongst the ranks of the righteous. Habit fillah an Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala Rasulullah qala Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam astakthiru al-Qur'an astakthiru al-Qur'an so the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says in sahih muslim and bukhari that letting us know what the believers should be doing he said, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam says astadhkiru al-Qur'an to recite or read or mention the Quran often. And so the Prophet والسلام, in this beautiful hadith, a very simple hadith, lets us know the importance of reading the Quran often and understanding its meaning and reflecting upon its meaning. That means we, we study some tafsir. That means we learn how to recite it. That means we memorize what we can of it and we mention it and we practice and implement it in our lives. So the believer takes that as a minhaj, as a methodology, as a way, meaning a consistent way of uh, practice and implementation. And that is implementing the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should strive our best to learn and recite the Qur'an often, implementing it and putting it in our lives, that we should strive our best to memorize what we can of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because how can we call to the Qur'an and the Sunnah if we don't know the Qur'an and we don't know the Sunnah? So this is a reminder to myself and my brothers and sisters to read the Qur'an often, even to the extent that you have uh, you know, to, you, to your ability, read and recite the Qur'an. If you don't know the Qur'an in Arabic and you can't recite the Arabic yet, then at least reading it in your language, if it's English, if it's Somali, if it's uh, what have you, reading the translation, because you the, the goal, the objective is to get the Qur'an back in our lives and have the Qur'an in our lives. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Bless us with ikhlas, with the battle of sunnah. Bless us to be of those who uphold, practice, understand, recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a last point I want to mention, a habit of Allah, that I heard from one of our scholars, Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr, hafidhullah ta'ala. And he mentioned about these kinds of uh, not just narrations in Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but these kinds of supplications where you're supplicating to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, asking Allah to make the Quran uh, a guidance for your heart and a light for you and a source, a source of nur and guidance, that you have to actually implement, make the effort. You can't ask for the Quran to uh, be a source of guidance and light in your life and you don't read the Quran. So that was the fa'idah, the great benefit that the shaykh mentioned, because a lot of us, we ask these things, but we're not making any effort to, and, and allowing that to happen. All the guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is not for us to just ask for things without striving. And that goes back to the concept of tawakkal Allah, of relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as the scholars mentioned, it is relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, putting your trust, putting your, your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making an effort. So for me or for one of us, we can't sit, simply say, hey, I want to 
become a millionaire or I want to get a job <laughs> or, or I want to be employed in such and such field. I want to be an engineer, but yet you don't go to college to be an engineer, yet you don't uh, strive to get an engineering job. You don't do internships. You don't make any effort, but yet you supplicate for that. So that, and the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but that person is missing a part of the important point in the fa'idah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who practice and those who implement and those who strive and those who gain the success. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.